As is usual, I want to welcome every one of you to the Sunday Light Fellowship of the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Today is uh, another great day because I am beginning a series of uh, teachings that uh, the Lord has designed to enrich us and in fact as a follow up to the one that we had last which uh, was titled that the calling and the gifts of the Lord on the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement are irrevocable. Now before we get into the beginning, the introduction to the series, I'm going to announce to you as usual, let's take uh, some songs from our songbook. The first song we're going to take is song number one. After that, we take song number five. And then following song number five, we go to song number 42. And we now get set. Let's take song number one. Song number one says, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing our great Redeemer's praise, the glories of our God and King the triumphs of his grace. Our gracious master and our God assist us to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of thy name. Jesus, the name of Hashem's our fears, the beast our sorrows sees. His music in the sinner's ears is life and hurt and peace. He breaks the power of canceled sin. He says the prisoner free, his blood can make the foulest clean. His blood averred for us. Hear him, ye deaf, his praise, ye dumb. You are losing the tongue's employ. Ye blind, behold, your Savior come and leap ye lamb for joy. Glory to God and praise and love be ever, ever given by saints below and saints above. The church in earth and in heaven. Yeah. 
for the son of thy love for Jesus who died and is now gone above we praise thee O God for thy spirit of light who has shown us our savior and scattered our night all glory and praise to the lamb that was slain who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain all glory and praise to the God of all grace who has bought us and sought us and guided our ways. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah. Die in the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Die in the glory. Revive us again. <laughs> Wonderful words of life. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life.
Redeemer, Father of our Lord and Savior, we thank you for another day, another opportunity, precious Father, to look into the perfect law of liberty. Thank you for the gathering of the people, for unto thee shall the gathering of the people be. That is what was prophesied even by Jacob the man of God, in the day that he was uh, blessing his children. We thank you, blessed Redeemer, King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you because of what we have uh, for this time around. Thank you for the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Thank you because their calling and the gifts of the Lord upon the ministry are irrevocable. Thank you because of the fact that we know what we are talking about. Thank you because of the assurance of the Holy Spirit within the heart. Thank you because of the testimony of the Lord here and there, eternal rock of ages which he has given even unto numerous people concerning even this matter. Glory be to your holy name, Lord Jesus. Glory be to you, Spirit of the living God. We have come again, dear Lord of our salvation, not to fulfill some obligation. We come for this Sunday life fellowship in order that through the uh, fellowship and through the word of God, we might be restored and renewed and refurbished. I bless your holy name because he that formed man from the dust of the earth has the capability of reforming man. He has the capability of refurbishing. He has the capability of replenishing. He has the capability of repairing. Lord in glory, therefore, through your word and spirit, do the reformation, do the refurbishing, do the recreation, and do the repairing necessary even in our hearts today and then for the days ahead in these last days. Thank you very much because we know that you will do much more than we can ask or think, because that is the promise of the living God. We bless your name because we know that you have answered us. Let every person that is in fellowship today, men, women, boys, and girls, old and young, let all of them be under the blessing of the Almighty God, so that at the end of the day, every person will say, this has borne the finger of the Lord. Thank you very much because we know the advanced in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have prayed. And let everybody say amen. 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 
Once more, I welcome you to this uh, Sunday Life Fellowship and the theme of uh, our series that we are beginning this time around is the many voices that speak in favor of the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. The many voices that speak in favor of the Watchman and even the Watchman ministers. Now, as a matter of introduction, I want to uh, say to you that even though we have, uh, through the last message titled The Calling and the Gifts of the Lord on the Watchman, are uh, irrevocable, proved that the Lord cannot go back on his calling on the ministry, I consider that message not sufficient to prove what we need to prove. That singular message is not sufficient. The reason is as follows. There are very many voices that we are hearing today. There are very many things that are intimidating. There are very many confusing things that are happening. And as a result of all those things, it has become necessary that we now speak from time to time, speak sufficiently, bring about truth sufficiently so that the people can be established, so that the people can be steadied and not be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. This series, as I said, has been necessitated by this mind blowing circumstances of our present day and present day happenings and I'm going to mention a few of such present day happenings. Now you and I know that the times we're living in are the last days, the very last days of the church age. It has been said repeatedly and you know the fact that it's been said over and over again does not make the, uh, the truth less important or less truthful. Now we are living in times of seared consciences. Times of seared consciences. And as I read uh, the scriptures where this thing was predicted, and then I will illustrate what I am talking about. In 1 Timothy, we're reading chapter 4 from verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we're reading verses 1 and 2. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. These are days when the conscience of people that are in Christendom, consciences of many people have been seared. When something is seared, it simply means that it has been covered. Now take a clay pot, for instance. A clay pot has a crack. And then you get the particular material that produces from the stem, maybe of uh, the pear tree. And then you take it, and then you take a knife, and then put the knife inside the fire until the edge of the knife becomes red hot. And then you bring that thing with which you want to patch up even the crack in the clay pot. And then you put it there, and then put this knife, red hot knife, and it will use it, that red hot knife will melt that substance and will use it to patch up that crack in the clay pot. And that pot will stop leaking. Now, the area that had been cracked had been seared. 
no more leakage of, from within or no more entrance of water from without. So also the heart of human beings have been seared spiritually by Satan using many, many things, doctrines that are terrible. And then as a result, now the people, their consciences are lost. They can't, they can't understand anything again. They'll stay in church and sin. And it doesn't mean anything anymore. Pastor stays in church, finishes sin, gets to the pulpit and preaches, and then does miracles, speaks in tongues. And then, but it did not mean anything to him. Somebody has enjoyed their friend and then comes to church, and two of them come to church, and at the time of prayer, they are all praying. And the thing did not mean anything. This is the day <coughs> we are into. A time of consciences being seared by doctrines of devils. Now there are times of the doctrines of devils. As we have seen in verse 1. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Let me tell you, watchman brother, let me tell you, watchman sister, watchman lady, watchman minister, every person that is possessed is not possessed with a violent spirit. There are those that are possessed with a Marian spirit. There are those that are possessed with violent spirits. There are those that are possessed with religious spirits. And the religious spirits are not violent. In fact, they have some calm men. When you see them, you will take them for children of God. But then why, how do we know that they are possessed? It is when they begin to shun out things that are contrary to what the Lord Jesus Christ said. When they begin to shun those things out with diligence, when they begin to shun out those things, even with eloquence and with great emphasis and with great argument, argument that holds, argument that is strong enough, when they begin to shun out those things with intelligence, now these ones are possessed with religious spirits. And what they are shunning out are doctrines of devils. The doctrines of the devils have made them to believe that a man can divorce his wife and get married to another woman. And a woman can divorce the husband and get married to another man and still be in church and still claim to be a child of God. A man can go hand in hand with a lady that's not even a wife and then they are friends. They call themselves friends and they can live together and they can go hand in hand together, join their hands and enjoy themselves and then and still be children of God and come to church together and come to fellowship together and pray together and things like that. These are times of doctrines of devils. And as a result of that, because the doctrines of devils are numerous, and they are very eloquent and they are very intelligently disseminated. Now many people have been ensnared. The young minds have been ensnared. The old ones have been ensnared. And they are thinking that those fanciful things are altogether good. But listen to me. If you want to know what is good, what is right, let's read even what is stated in 1 Timothy chapter 6. Let's read from verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 6, so as to be able to know what, how somebody can discover what is of God and what is not of God. Doctrine that is of Christ, doctrine that is not of Christ. No matter how intelligent, no matter how eloquent, no matter how great the argument, how to discover whether it's of God or not of God. First Timothy chapter 6, we read from verse 1. 
Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort, but these two verses are not where we are dwelling. Look at the important place. Verse 3. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to hold some words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the doctrine which is according to godliness, listen to me. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to hold some words, even the words that agree with the words that Jesus Christ spoke, the doctrines that are in agreement with the doctrine of Jesus. The views that are in agreement with the views of Jesus. The arguments that are in agreement with the argument of Jesus. The lifestyle that is in agreement with the lifestyle that Jesus Christ talked about and lived. If any man teaches otherwise than such things. Now... The doctrine that produces right living, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, that and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, doctrine that produces godliness, argument that produces godliness, righteousness. If somebody is doing anything, if somebody is saying anything, no matter how eloquent, no matter how intellectually, uh, how intelligent that argument is, no matter how fanciful, it says if it is not such doctrine that agrees with what the Lord Jesus Christ said, and that produces righteousness, it says that person is proud, Knowing nothing. So I can say that that person is an entity. That so-called man of God is an entity. That so-called man of God is a fool. Knows nothing. Very ignorant. He says, and is proud. He says, knowing nothing. But doting about questions and strifes of words. Wherein commit envy, strife, railings, evil, surmises, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. These are the days where we have uh, multitudes of such people. And then very many people, young people, are listening to them. And then they are fascinated about the things that they are presenting. But now the things that are presenting, are they producing godliness? Are they producing godliness? Are they in consonance with what the Lord Jesus Christ said? The Lord Jesus Christ said, You have heard it was said, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But now, I tell you, I make it more elaborate. I make it more serious. It's not just that thou shalt not commit adultery, but if you should look at a woman to lust after the woman, you have committed adultery. And now these ones tell us, wear what you like, wear the slacks, wear the short skirts. Now show us all the contours, paint up all your body, and then come to church, and then seduce people. And now in the name of being Fanciful, in the name of being in a new world. Now, that which they are teaching and allowing. Now, does it not contradict what Jesus Christ said? You know that many, many times I tell the watchmen, don't go to join the people that the Bible calls poor souls. Poor souls. I read about poor souls last time from Jeremiah. We don't have time. Jeremiah chapter, I think chapter 5. And now, these are apostles. You have heard what he said. 
Now it is because we are in such times of doctrines of devils yielding terrible things among the people. We are at such times where you have anointing through sin. This is another message of itself. Some time ago, I announced this message. The message is outstanding. And one of our pastors came back telling me that the day I announced that I was going to preach on anointing through sin. And he couldn't understand what this man is talking about. What kind of message is this? Anointing through sin. But now he came back to me and saying that with what we are seeing in the present day, I can now see that there is anointing through sin. And that is how many of the people have gotten the anointing. Anointing through sin. After they have entered into adultery, after they have entered into uh, lesbianism, after they have entered into many, many things, after they have entered into some occultic things, now they get anointed. That anointing is not the type that I got. Listen to me. It's not the type that I got. I sought to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and I sought it passionately. I sought it with all my life after I had become sanctified. I sought it and sought it and sought it and it wasn't forthcoming. I went to somebody that was baptized with the Holy Spirit and I traced him to his house and I said, I come to you this morning, this afternoon. I want to be baptized with the spirit that is inside you. That was in 1975. And then he prayed, laid hand upon me, and then nothing happened. And I went on seeking and seeking. And after a number of years, the deed was done. Now, today, every person comes out, and the next moment they are speaking in tongues. These are the days of anointing through sin. The times of apostasy. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, we read from verse 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, Incontinent, fierce, despisers, those that are good, traitors, hey, the high mind, the lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power of godliness thereof. From such turn away, days of apostasy, days of mass backsliding, as we find in Second Thessalonians, days of huge backsliding. Because of the fact that we are in such circumstances, we need to go through this series that I'm bringing to you so that the watchman people can be established. Their hands should be steady, not tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Listen to me. If you are a member of this uh, church, if you are a youth, you are an adult, a man or woman, a boy or girl, you should be like me. You should be like father, like son, like father, like daughter. Listen to me. I cannot be deceived because I was taught and cleansed. I cannot be deceived. I know the truth. I will continue to shout it. I know the truth now, and I want you to know the truth so that you should not be deceived. I cannot be swear. Listen to me, you come with revelation, you saw God. And then when you tell me that you saw God, and then I listen to that revelation, and it does not agree with what I know about God, the ways of God, quick God has made me to know, I will shun you and that your revelation. That is it. There are very many people that have come with this and that, and I have told them, listen to me, I don't walk with revelation, I don't walk with dreams. I walk with what I know. Now, we are in such times of mass backsliding. The times of iniquity are bounding. And the love of many people, the zeal of many people, the desire of many people for, for things of the Lord, the desire 
and the zeal for evangelism, for prayer, for right living, everything going down the drain. And then people don't care. In marriage, they, they, they pick and choose. They do what they like. They fabricate many things and tell us a cock and bull stories and tell lies. Tell lies. Somebody wrote a testimony and then as I was praying concerning the something which they told me about, the Lord said, leave these people, they are schemers. There are very many people that are scheming right now. These are the days in which we find ourselves. The days of false teachers that have abounded. And I have the responsibility to bring you out from the teachings of false teachers. From the people that are ravening wolves in the house of God. People that have backslidden. People that may have had truth in times past. But right now, they are pursuing pecuniary things. Money has become their God. Their belly has become their God. And now you are running after such people, not knowing that they are backslidden. There are those that are now like the old prophet that deceived the new prophet, the younger one. So it is my responsibility to help people in the watchman. And I am just wanting to do what God has called me to do, to keep you away from false teachers. In 2 Peter chapter 2, we are reading verses 1 and 2. But there were false prophets also among them, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now, we have uh, them just uh, operating everywhere. The internet is filled with uh, everything. YouTube is filled with everything. Um, Facebook is filled with everything. Somebody showed me a posting uh, two days ago, where somebody picked from what we said, that the rapture, the pre-rapture necessity, as we have in the Ephesians chapter 4, how that God will use the ministry of the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists and the teachers and the pastors to prepare the church to prepare the church and make the church to have a major, some substantial major of the nature of Christ. And now before the rapture takes place. And then somebody quoted it and then said that it means therefore that the rapture will not take place until something happens. And then he said, because God is one. And now, do you know what this person said? Now God is one. And now for him, the coming together that is mentioned in that Ephesians chapter 4 until we all come to the unity of the faith. Do you know what this person posted? He posted the sign of Christianity. He posted the sign of uh, Judaism. He posted the sign of uh, Islamism. He posted the sign of Hinduism. And he posted the sign of all these other religions that they have to be together. Because it is one God. And this individual was with us. So all of them must be together. Ecumenism. And then the rapture will take place. Because God is one. God must bring all of them together. These are the days we're into. So then, that is the reason I need to speak more on the issue of the thing that speaks for the watchman, so that somebody will know where he or she is. It is the time when babes and the totally depraved, the totally ignorant, or the totally backslidden, or the partially depraved, and the partially ignorant, and the partially backslidden 
have become leaders, have become kings, and have become teachers. Now I'm fulfilling what we have in Ecclesiastes. In Ecclesiastes, he says, Woe unto thee, O land, when thy king is a child. When thy king does not know anything. When thy king is ignorant. Woe to thee, O church. Woe to thee, O congregation. Woe to thee, O Christian. When the person that you are listening to is a child. When the person that you are listening to does not know anything. When the person that you are listening to does not know anything about right living. When the person that you are listening to doesn't have experience. When the person that you are listening to was not taught. When the person that you are listening to was not cleansed. Woe to thee, O Christian. But that is not the will of God. And it is because of all these things that I need to speak the more, the more and the more on the things that speak in favor of the watchman, Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, and in favor of this man you are seeing and you are listening to and in favor of the ministers of the watchman that are my children. The next thing that I want to do is to show you that there are many, many things that speak. Many, many things speak. Living things speak. Non-living things speak. They have voices. Living things have voices. The sparrows speak. God understands what they say. The birds of the air speak, the fishes speak, and God understands what they say. Heaven and earth are speaking. All the, all the things that we see, the sun, the moon, the stars, day by day, night after night, season after season, they are speaking. Now in Psalm 19. Psalm 19, we read verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The heavens, the first heavens, the atmospheric heavens before space, the second heavens, space, and the galaxies and all the things, the sun, the moon, where you have the, the solar system, now they speak. The firmament shows the handiwork of God. Day unto day, uttereth speech. Night unto night, showeth knowledge. There is no language, there is no speech, there is no nation, there is no language where their voice is not heard. They are speaking. So many, many things speak. Do you know that talent speaks? Yes. If somebody has football talent, it speaks for him. When the people that are scouting for players, for teams, go around and they spot the person that has talent, they will go to the person and they will engage the person. Intelligence speaks. If you have a physical strength, it speaks. When they want to hire somebody that want to do some work, now they go for the person that has physical strength. I remember all the time that we have been doing buildings in Logos International Secondary School, the three-story building. And I know a particular man, brother, hefty, strong, and each time there was need to chisel out Anything from the concrete column, anything from the concrete beams, anything from the concrete slabs, it was that brother, strong, hefty, that was, was brought. His strength spoke for him. So, very many things speak. And so, we are just wanting to show a number of things that speak in preparation for the things that are coming. Get ready for next Sunday because by the grace of God possibly from this time through to the beginning of the December meeting, we will be having two messages every Sunday. Two messages that will last an uh, average of one hour and a quarter. 
so that I'll be able to exhaust what we are talking about. Many things speak. And then, after I have given the introduction by showing you how many things speak, then next Sunday, we begin to show the things that speak for Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Even though I mentioned three points in the previous uh, message, but they are not sufficient. They are not sufficient because of what I have said. They are not sufficient because of the day we are into. The day we are into are horrible. The day we are into are the days where I cannot afford. I cannot afford to let you dance to the left, dance to the right, dance backward, dance forward with every wind of doctrine. It is my responsibility to bring Jacob back to God again. But you are part of Jacob, and God has given us even that responsibility as a congregation and as a church. But if Jacob must be brought by some people, those people must have been brought back to God. Because the physician must first be healed. You cannot give what you don't have. And if people are dancing toward nasty things, how can we now tell them to begin to bring people that are dancing toward nasty things back to God? So it's my responsibility to do the needful in order to stabilize even this church called Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Remember that a number of months ago, it was stated that we are recommencing. And that was by the Spirit of God. It was the first day of this year that that statement was made at our nature and then was repeated in a worry. Now we are recommencing, which means I am returning to the basics, which means I am returning to the drawing board, which means I am returning to teach on regeneration, on sanctification, on genuine, genuine experience of being born again, because the present day has fake, fake, fake things, fake experiences. You have fake Naira, you have fake cement, you have fake products, you have fake dollar, you have fake everything. So there are fake, fake experiences. Fake baptism with the Holy Spirit. Somebody told me yesterday how that somebody from a church was sent to follow up somebody that attended their church. A girl was sent to follow up a boy. And as is usual with that assembly, it is a boy that must follow up a girl. It is a man that must follow up a woman. And this woman came into the house of this young man and slept there. And they slept on the same bed and enjoyed themselves. And then in the morning, now he said, let us do quiet time. And then was saying, have you been baptized with the Holy Spirit? And then, now this person was confused. And then they began to pray. And he ministered Holy Spirit baptism. Holy Spirit in quote. And then that person began to speak in tongues. It was later on that that person came and cornered one of our pastors. And that told me this thing yesterday or the day before yesterday. These are the days we are into. And as a result, you need to know where you are and need to be established about it. Now, I have talked about many things speaking. I have talked about how the heavens and the earth speak volumes in favor of God. Now, I want to show you some other things that, that speak in favor of people. Speak in favor of somebody. Speak in favor of people. And now, after I have enumerated a few of them, I will close and we will pray. Now, when you come back, we now begin to serialize item by item the things that speak volumes in favor of the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement and in favor of the man that is speaking to you. And in favor of all them that have aligned with me, that are my children indeed. 
I remember that a few months ago, we had the message that says, who is on the side of the Lord? Who is on the side of the ministry? And who is on the side of this man of God? That is important. That is necessary. There was a time that it became necessary that Moses should step aside that way. And then because the people had backslidden, and they had totally backslidden, and the Lord was now ready to consume them. And now the man of God now stepped aside that way and then said, who is on the side of the Lord? And who is on my side? I am on the side of the Lord. And then the children, the house of Levi, the descendants of Levi, now rushed to him. We are on your side. We are on the side of the Lord. And then those other people thought it was a joke. And now it says, Thus says the Lord, every one of you, take up your sword and get into the midst of the people. Your brother, your cousin, your uncle, and kill everybody. It is time for me to continue to speak and say, who is on the side of the Lord? Who is on the side of truth? Who is on the side of this man? Who is on the side of Jesus? Who is the person that is waiting for the rapture? Who is the person that says, I want to make it? Who is the person that says, I cannot be lost? Who is the person that is saying, I have begun well, I must end well? Who is the person that is saying, I will not backslide? Who is the person that is saying it like I am saying it? So it is because of all these necessities that I am saying the thing that I'm saying. Now, let's see how some things spoke for some people. The blood of Abel spoke in his favor. Let's go to Genesis chapter 4. We are reading from verse 3, and in the process of time it came to pass that came brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Stop there and look up and listen. Two people offered, and God had respect, God appreciated, God received the offering of the one person, but refused the offering of the other person. You ask me why? And why not? Now, this other person was the person that first offered the fruit of the land. Listen to me. Some people think that it is because he didn't offer blood, he didn't offer the fat, he didn't sacrifice. That was the reason. No. It was what he had that he offered. But he did it mechanically. He did it not with faith. He did it, he fulfilled some obligation. You know that when you are born by parents, listen to me, remember that these are, we are descendants of Adam, they are, these are children of Adam, and they will have known about this offering unto the Lord through their parents. Just like people in church, through their parents, they know how to pray, through their parents, they know the name of Jesus, through their parents, they know about the Holy Spirit. Through their parents, they know about heaven. Through their parents, they know about life after death. But, you know, the things they know may be mechanical, may be just mental knowledge and use nothing. And so this person, mental knowledge, made an offering. But this other person had a better knowledge and he offered that thing sacrificially. That is, sacrifice the animals to atone for his sin. He understood, he understood somehow that that is an appropriate thing to do. And he did it with faith. This other person did it mechanically, did it just for the sake of doing it. And then God refused the sacrifice of this person and then accepted the sacrifice of the other person. And now the other person that, whose sacrifice was not accepted now rose up in, in offense, in envy, and then killed his brother. And you know what? 
he spilled the blood of his brother. As he hit him, and then blood gushed down, and the earth received the, the blood of his brother. And now the Lord came and began to say, let's hear what the Lord said. And verse 6, and the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wrong, and why is thy countenance falling? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall it be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass that when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Boldness. What thing that we call sinful boldness. And let me bring to say it. There are very many people that have sinful boldness in charge. And they come around and say, I fear nobody. I don't fear Jesus. I don't fear a pastor. I will say the truth. I don't fear anybody. This is sinful boldness. You don't fear anybody. You don't have respect for anybody. I didn't say that if anybody does anything wrong, you should not report the something that somebody has done. But should you come and say, I fear nobody. I fear no Jesus. I fear nobody. I only fear God. I can tell you that you are a sinner. You don't have respect for your father. You come to the house where your father and your mother are. And then you are saying, I fear nobody. I fear nobody in this house. I fear nobody in this house. I'll do what I like. And your father will be washing and will be happy and clapping his hand for you. I fear nobody. Now, this person was even having the boldness to query God and say, Am I my brother's keeper? And then the Lord said in verse 9 unto Cain, Where is thy brother? And he said, I'm, I, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. Blood speaks. Listen to me. Blood speaks. All the people that have died on the Nigerian roads, listen to me. And they shouldn't have died what some people have called Nigerian death as a result of neglect of the people that are responsible. All the blood of those people are speaking against the people that are responsible. Let me tell you something. You are in a place and you are supposed to guide those children where you are, guide them to safety, and then you didn't do that. And then what happened was, as the people were not going, you didn't do that. And then one of them was knocked down by a motor vehicle and the person died. I want to tell you that the blood of the person is speaking against you. Blood speaks. And we saw the sacrifice of Abel. Good sacrifice speaks. Blood speaks. And now, even later on, the apostle made reference to this place that we have read in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. We are reading from verse 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Eber. Listen to me. The blood of sprinkling. Now listen, this reference is unto the blood that the high priest has sprinkled for the cleansing of the sin of the people on the day of atonement. And then the one that the people were the daily day-to-day -day priestly offerings that were done in the sanctuary where the people came and they offered for the remission of their sins. And the blood of those goats on animals were spilled. Their blood was speaking. And then, because the uh, sin attracts death, every person that sins must die. And then, instead of the person dying, the animal dies. The blood of the animal is spilled. And then the animal's blood is speaking in favor of the person that did the sacrifice. 
the blood that the high priest has sprinkled in the Holy of Holies, the blood of the animal that cleansed the sin, that covered the sin of the people, spoke in favor of the people. And then, and the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross of Calvary speaks in favor of anybody, even continues to speak through to eternity. So, blood speaks volumes in favor of people, in favor of the sinner who comes repenting. Blood speaks, sacrifice speaks. Do you know that gifts speak? If you bring gift to somebody, oh, praise God, if you bring gift to somebody, and gift that is uh, very precious, the gift will speak. The gift will speak for you. The man will remember it. The woman will remember it all the time. Listen to me. There are those people, there are those people that uh, come around and uh, they come to church and they give God five naira, 10 naira, 20 naira, that will not be able to buy some handful of granite and they put it in the offering box and they will dance to the offering box and dance back. And then they are just jokers in church. They do not know that gifts speak. Worthy gifts speak. Worthy gifts speak. They speak volumes for the person in the presence of God. And even they speak in this world, give speak. In Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16, this is what we have. It says, a man's gift maketh room for him. He bringeth him before great men. He speaks and makes room for him. Now, if you want to understand it, because scripture interprets scripture, let's go back to Genesis 32, so you will be able to understand what is being said there. Genesis chapter 32, verse 19, we read, And so commanded he the second and the third and all that followed the droves, saying, On this man shall you speak to Esau when you find him. The people that Jacob had sent ahead of him when he was returning to his brother and to their land from where he ran away. And verse 20, and say ye, moreover, behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with a present that goeth before me. And afterward, I will see his face. But adventure, he will accept of me. He sent a gift in order to appease his brother. Gifts speaks, and he sent worthy gifts, even though his brother remembered what he did, initially refused the gift, but he persuaded him, and he accepted it, and reconciled with him. Gifts speak, and worthy gifts speak. In Mark chapter 12, we read, Mark chapter 12, verse 41, And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a fadden. And he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you that this poor widow had cast more in than all they which have cast in into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Sacrificial gift speaks, and Jesus Christ said it. This woman has cast in more, and for reward, her reward is more. For what she has done. That is that. Do you know that humility speaks? He spoke for Ahab. I do not have time. Ahab was a great sinner. Made Israel to sin. 
and went in the way of Jeroboam. And then, but God said, a prophet said, I'm going to deal with you. I'm going to deal with you and deal with your family and deal with your offspring. But you know what? Ahab now showed some humility. And the Lord postponed what he wanted to do. In 1 Kings chapter 21, from verse 22. And we make thine house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah. For the provocation, wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. That the prophet speaking against Ahab and his wife Jezebel. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that died of Ahab in the city, the dog shall eat. And him that died in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel is wise tired of. And he did very abominably in following idols, according to all things as, the, as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And it came to pass when Ahab had these words, that he rent his clothes in repentance and put on sackcloth in repentance upon his flesh and fasted in repentance and lay in sackcloth in repentance and in humility and went solemnly, softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the teach by saying, See thou how Ahab humbled himself before me because he humbled himself before me. I will not bring this evil in his days. But in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. He postponed it, the evil. He shared the evil for Ahab. Because of Ahab's repentance and his humility. Humility speaks. I want to show you also that piety speaks. Piousness speaks. The centurion is a case study. In Acts of Apostles chapter 10. Acts of Apostles chapter 10, we read him. From verse 1, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house. We gave much alms to the people and prayed to God all the way. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming unto him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. Prayers and arms have come up for a memorial. That is a monument before God. Prayers and arms is philanthropy. Has come up for a memorial. Has come up and became a statue even before God. To the point that God now sent an angel even to him. To attend to him and to show him what he needed to do in order to be perfect, in order to be complete. So piety speaks. So righteousness speaks. So philanthropy speaks. Now Moses' meekness spoke for him. In the day that his senior sister and senior brother came against him. And then the Lord said, why do you have the ghost? To go and speak against my servant Moses, who is the meekest of all men under the sun. You will not get away with it. And he struck Miriam, the ringleader, with leprosy. You are asking me, why was, uh, why was uh, his senior brother Aaron not struck with leprosy? And Miriam was struck with leprosy. Miriam was the gang leader. Miriam was the person that instigated it and he had to get the punishment. But the point we're making here is that the meekness and the sacrifice and the righteousness of Moses spoke volumes in his favor. Time has failed me to tell you of numerous other cases. Joseph's righteousness spoke for him. Abraham's sacrifice spoke for him. In Genesis chapter 22, when the man has killed his son, as it were, in obedience unto God, 
And then the Lord said, by myself I swear. In blessing I will bless you. In multiplying I will multiply you. By myself I swear. And you know that when people swear by God, now the matter is settled. And now by myself I swear. Because I cannot swear by any other person. No other person is bigger than me. So by myself I swear. That is what happened. So there are things that are speaking volumes in favor of the watchman, Catholic charismatic renewal movement. Therefore, what should be your response after that you have heard this much? What you have heard is that we're living at times that are dangerous, mass backsliding, a lot of things, a lot of doctrines of devils, and as a result, I need to establish the people. I need to establish that the watchman is not a place that you can toy with. That God, that there are things that are speaking in favor of the watchman. And so you need to stay pure. And so you need to stay in and not stay out. Now, what should be your reaction now? Your reaction should be this. I will not do anything against this ministry for whom many things are speaking in favor of before God. You cannot afford to raise your voice and begin to talk against watchman. You cannot afford to raise your voice and begin to criticize, talk about this and talk about that. There are very many people that are talking about administration. But they said they have no administration. But if you ask the people that are saying that to explain the word administration, they will not be able to explain the word. And as I don't have administration, I want to ask you, did I tell you that I read the business administration? Did I tell you that I read the human resources management? I am a quantity surveyor. I am a builder. I'm a technical person. And so you come with your administration, and then we ask you, what is your qualification? Many things are speaking in favor of the watchman. If you speak against the watchman, you are endangering yourself. In times past, I have told you, and I tell you again, watchman is a prick. And I illustrated it. If you go to a concrete wall, reinforced concrete wall, and while you are building that reinforced concrete wall. Then you went and sharpened a piece of iron, whole iron, and sharpened it and cast it into that concrete wall. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, maybe six together. And now their are, are sharp edges, their sharp points are protruding this way. And then somebody comes around and then runs and uses his foot to now kick that thing as a football. What will happen to the foot of the person? Of course, your guess is as good as mine. So if you speak against watchman, you are, you are kicking against the prick. Simple and short. You are kicking against the prick. And there are very many people who have put themselves at a crossroads with the Lord. They are now at crossroads with the Lord. That is, they are now colliding with the Lord for speaking against the watchman. Do you know the watchman? Do you know the origin? Do you know what is speaking for the watchman? Do you know that very many voices are speaking volumes in favor of the watchman, in favor of the man that is talking to you? And I have the boldness to say it. And I will say it before the devil. And I will say it before Angel Michael. And I will say it before Angel Gabriel. And nobody will argue. And the argument will hold. None of those angels will argue. Satan knows it. And so why? I have good intention. My desire is not, is not that you give me your money. So I can go and build a house. 
so that I can go and buy a house in UK, or I go and buy a house in America. I'm not interested. If I'm calling for your money, I'm calling for your money that we may do the Lord's work. My mountain, Caleb said unto Joshua, give me Hebron. Give me this mountain. Give me this place. And then Hebron was given to him. Give me this mountain. Because you were there when we went for the spine. And then we have arrived the place. Therefore, give me what belongs to me. And that was given to him. Hebron was given to Caleb. Now, but I told the Lord, what is my mountain? My mountain is a rapturable church. My mountain is that you should go to heaven. My mountain is that the people that are feuding, the marriages that have been scattered, should be repaired. That's my mountain. That those that are getting into it and they are fighting, that women should know what married women should know. And the way they should behave toward their husbands. And when I see that happening, and God will keep me alive, and it has to happen. That's my mountain. When I see the youth, and they close their eyes to immorality, and then they say, we belong to Jesus, we don't belong to Satan. That's my mountain. If they are in the university, they are saying it. They are in the colleges, they are saying it. They are in uh, schooling in America, they are saying it. They are schooling in Nigeria, they are saying it. In the campuses, they are saying it. Others may, we cannot. That's my mountain. That's my house. That's my jet. So if I'm calling for money, that is why I'm calling for money so that I can begin to package things together where I can achieve that mountain. And then if somebody has this kind of mind, is the man not a good man? If it be not a good man, what is it then? So then, take note, by the time we come back, we will begin to x-ray point by point, item by item, the things that have been speaking for watchman from the one. And we speak through to the rapture. Having had that, you get yourself ready. This is not the time of uh, picking and choosing which fellowship you will attend. You ought to attend every fellowship. I understand that the people don't come to charismatic hour again. They don't come to Bible study again. The money to come to Sunday life fellowship. Let me tell you, my friend, going to heaven is not easy. Economy has no dive. Very many people don't have job. And then you have to jump from one bus to the other. And you think that that is sufficient reason why you should not come to fellowship. Then the people that went to Jesus Christ from the city to the desert will be your judge. And then the people that went from all the places to the desert to meet John the Baptist will be your judge. Remember that God does not change in his ways. All the people that have brought uh, nasty changes, brought uh, things that are, have no, that don't hold any water, making the thing to be very easy, making the thing to be very convenient. But Jesus Christ did not tell us that going to heaven is a convenient thing. He said there are two roads. One road is broad, easy. He says wide, no obstacles. And he said many people are on that road because that road is broad, no obstacles. But he said the road that leads to eternal life to God, to Jesus Christ, is narrow. And now, he says, a few find it. The broad road, you don't need to find it. It is there. You don't need to find it. It is there. But the narrow road, you need to find it. So that preaching is timeless. That preaching was for the first century. 
That preaching is for this century. That preaching is for the next century. That preaching is for throughout eternity. That's Christianity. All the people that made it otherwise, they are fake. So then, get glued. Get tuned. The people that uh, minister to them in the television, say, in television programs, you know, they will tell them, don't go away, stay with us. So I want to tell you, don't go away. Stay with us in the watchman. Next Sunday, I begin to serialize item by item the things that speak volumes in favor of the watchman and in favor of the person talking with you and in favor of all my children. It is time for us to rise up and bow down heads to pray. Rise up wherever you are and then think in your mind, rehearse in your mind, review in your mind the much you have heard and then begin to say, Lord, I thank you. I can see that there are many things that speak be volumes in favor of human beings, in favor of God, in favor of this person, in favor of the other person. So I am set. I can understand where the man is going. I can understand where the message is going. And I will avail myself of this message so that I will be able to do what I should do, so that I will be able to listen to what I should listen to, so that I will be able to drop what I should drop, so that I will be able to cast away what I should cast away so that I will be able to stay where I should stay. Pray unto God. Pray unto God. Pray unto God. Pray reasonably. Pray with knowledge. Pray with assurance. You have understood that what has been preached is not ambiguous. And when you understand and pray with understanding, then your prayer will reach into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Eternal Father, I want to thank you. Thank you very much for the word. Thank you because you have heard. Thank you because it's on record. How that many things are speaking volumes in favor of the watchman. And today we have shown why we are going through this message, this series. The situation on ground. And we have shown a number of things that spoke for people in times past. In order to prepare the minds of the people for what is coming. Lord, I bless your holy name. I know that the people are making up their minds and saying we can understand. And somebody is saying I can understand. I am understand. I know where he is going. I know what the message is all about. Bring it to me. And I am foreseeing people. I am perceiving that people are saying, bring it to me. Bring the message to me. And if there be people that are saying that, Lord, that they are blessed people already, even before the message arrives. Thank you for this day. Thank you for what we have had. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for the anointing that breaks the yoke. Thank you for genuine anointing. Thank you for the word of truth. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for eternity. Eternity that is guaranteed. Even as we do the will of God. Precious Father, I bless your name. I pray, bless the people. Lord, bless the people. Lord, bless the people. My mountain is the people that they may be rapturable. I am not looking for a jet. I am not looking for house. I am not looking for car. I have never ridden a new car. It has been Tukumbo from day one. I may be Tukumbo till I die, till the rapture takes place. I don't care about that. What I care about is that multitudes of people should go to heaven and follow me to heaven. Thank you for answer to prayers. Thank you for answer to prayers. Dislodge their mind from vain things, from the useless things that fill the world. Precious Father, which the devils have, have, have crafted 
and then pushed into the world through social media platforms. No order. Destroy everything destroyable. Remove everything removable. You are the maker of the man. You form man from the dust of the ground. You can reform him. You can recreate whom you form. You can refurbish whom you form. You can recreate him. Recreate the boys and girls. Recreate their minds. Let them hate sin. Let them like righteousness. Let them love the Lord. Let them love Jesus. Let them love the church. Let them love the world. Let them love fellowship. Let them love evangelism. Let them love Bible. Let them love prayer. Let them love the thing that you love. Let them hate Satan. Let them hate sin. Thank you for answer. Thank you for answer. Thank you for answer. Heal the families. Heal the marriages. Glory be to you for answering me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.